Welcome to the Popish Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. Today, we're here with a saint. Not just a saint. A viewer-requested saint. That's right. Yes. And I have to say, I, I, I'm, I'm giving them points for really trying to test us with this. Because for this one, on the first page of Google Answers mm-hmm. about it, mm-hmm. half of them were not in English. I had to, like... Read through something using my French and then be like, okay, now hit translate. Yeah, that seems right. You know, okay, that's what it is. Uh, That doesn't seem... Do you guys see what we're willing to do for you? I'm pretty sure another saint did not make his clothes, but instead, you know, let him become a monk, but... (laughs) Nope. Another saint's whole saintliness is based on, I gotta make this guy a blazer. I don't think he made his vestments. I think he invested him and it nope, was young. Just, nope, nope, just made a blazer. <laughs> All right, who are we talking about? Saint Morand of Cluny. Nice. I'd never heard of him before. No, no. Uh, clearly, I, the, the, I, I don't know yet. Clearly, uh, Purdy Do has, and probably just enough to, to make it worthwhile mm-hmm. to put us to work. Moran? All right. So they were born in an unknown year. Nice. But we know about where they were born. Okay. Uh, Worms, Germany. Hmm. But we know when they died, but we're not entirely sure where. <laughs> Listen, people. You <laughs> get uncertainty about one or the other. Heck. I hear they've gone for the combo platter. So you can know what It's like so... physics. You, you either know what they're doing or, or where they are. The Heisenberg you know? <laughs> uncertainty principle is in full effect. Even wow. though, yes, we know that's not how that's, Heisenberg that, works. That, no, no, but that, but, that's, that, but that really is sort of the, the, the nature of a, of a particle. I mean, you can either know where it is or what it's doing. New heresy just dropped. Saints are like particles. <laughs> no, no, no. Not all saints. Just this one. In a lot of other ones we've discussed. It's a, it's a central tenet of Nathanism. <laughs> Anyway, it was in 1115, and it was possibly in, if someone else can... Altkirch. Yes, which is currently in France. It's that area of France that's right by Germany, and it's mm-hmm. on the, the Rhine. The Alsace. Mm-hmm. We do know from some sources he was considered very old when he died, so... Like 40. <laughs> I'm guessing older than that, given what they said. Yeah, 55. <laughs> We're not sure, but sometime, a probably a very long time before 1115. Mm-hmm. Yeah, scripture says 70, 80 if we're strong. Mm-hmm. And their feast date is June the 3rd. I also saw some sources that suggest that it is June the 4th in France, even though they stated he died on the 3rd. Maybe so I doing... don't know if there's like another more popular local yeah. saint in there. Yeah, they're the doing deal. something big on the 3rd. Huh. Attributes include a habit and a bunch of grapes. Hmm. Patronage would be would include wine and grape growers. That explains the attribute. Winemakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, he's against late, or they were against late frost. I'm assuming well, it's a he. Yeah, but... he was a monk. It, it, it's the next thing. He's a priest. Moran is. It's just mm-hmm. Moran is not a very descriptive. It, oh, you don't know uh, any know. girls named Moran? Well, I, mean, I don't know any guys <laughs> named Moran. He was also <laughs> called Mirando or Mirandus. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, against late frosts. Well, I mean, especially if you're involved in you know, winemaking, you definitely don't want a late frost. Mm-hmm. But it's for the parishes of Steinbach, Balschweiler, and Altkir. <laughs> it's great. It'd be terrible if he was against for, them. For, for, well, you know, for, <laughs> for, you know what? I spent my last years of my life. I got a parish. problem with you people, <laughs> and you people, and you people. Look, for a moment, I was about to say that, and, and I blame it on the punctuation because. <laughs> Against Le Frost, at the comma parish. the parishes of Steinbach, <laughs> comma Balschweiler, comma all crack. If I'm ever a saint, I want to be a patron against a particular church. <laughs> you people, right out. Uh, again, it's the, the the amount of you know hunting to find this information. Yeah. Almost no. all the ones are like no, no, wine I, grapes. <laughs> yeah. I like I like mm-hmm. Mike's plan. I like if only because it should actually get hopefully hopefully. It should actually get the members of the that parish to actually pray more. <laughs> this is a plan to inspire because, you to because, holiness. Because if I were truly exhibiting mm-hmm. love and justice, I would mm-hmm. as a saint, I would not harbor ill will towards a, a, a member of God's body. It's not me. It's you. Exactly. Right. right. So he was a Benedictine priest, a monk, a founder, and. A noted miracle worker. Nice. So, 
information on this saint was hard to find. Yep, I went over that already. We're, we're to there. <laughs> he was born into a noble family near Worms, Germany, and was educated at the cathedral school. Which sounds super impressive, except for at that time, all the schools were cathedral schools. <laughs> but, as opposed to not going to school. Yep. <laughs> he became a priest and went on a pilgrimage to Santiago de Com to uh, Camino de Santiago. On the way, he stayed at the Benedictine Monastery of Cluny, and on the way back from the pilgrimage, he joined the Benedictines at Cluny. That's a pretty big deal, because Cluny was Cluny was very big and influential. Yes, yes. And, and apparently St. Hugh was the uh, abbot at the time. And as far as we know, did not make his vestments. That was a translational issue. <laughs> <laughs> Although maybe that is how, maybe that is why Hugh was so saintly. Because he was so humble that even though he was the exalted abbot of Cluny, he would still personally make the vestments for novice Benedictines. Probably not, not. but... <laughs> You can't prove he see, didn't. See, this is we how we get hope. the saints that we have to have an asterisk of. We're not sure if this was a typo. <laughs> Given the difficulty of finding information, again, in French on St. Morand, prove that Hugh didn't make their vestments. I dare you. I mean, he was a bit more well-known. They might have him. I didn't then look up him. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, you're you're researching it. He explicitly did not make vestments. That'd be great. So, he was then sent to the Auvergne monasteries. I like how you, you got the hard word. Yeah, you got the hard word. And just the, 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 the Auvergne monasteries. Uh, Count Frederick Fairs. Sent for monks as he wanted to restore the Church of Saint Christopher around 1100, hmm. and he was sent as he was from the, from near that area. He became the uh, Count's counselor, the Count's counselor, yeah, <laughs> and founded the monastery of Saint Christopher at Elkirch. Nice. Yep. He was known for traveling the area wide, no matter what the weather, for the spiritual needs of the people in his area. Even that's if they were smoke need, from a That's fire. what we need. More monks that are just wandering about to trying to take care of the spiritual needs of people. Amen. And I, I stated at the beginning that he that was a miracle priests. worker. And therefore, I, I wanted to add some of his miracles, mm -hmm. including ending up with the ones of why he's in charge of wine. Nice. Beyond, All right. beyond just the fact that it's great. Yeah. So, right from the top here, uh, cured the sick on numerous occasions. Uh, there were two holes in his tomb so that people with headaches could put their hands <laughs> close. That, oh, that's just weird. No. To his body for not, not enough that you could touch, as far as I can tell, but just, you know, it's a big stone st slab, so they made some little things, so you're like... <laughs> I'm, I'm closer. Yep. See, this, uh, yeah, see no. this much rock... Blocks any holy action. This, <laughs> this much, much rock so... does. No, well, this is like radiation, and the, 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 the stone is blocking it, but only to this down. Hey, and, but man. only people with headaches, apparently. Uh, stop Not the for curing it. Stop the fire by making the sign of the cross. That's impressive. See, now that one really is. I mean, that's that's up there. You know, you just walk up to a burning house. And Boom. Just... That was his go-to because there, there's another miracle involving similar. Hey, <laughs> the wind picks up and just. <laughs> The saints will be the first to tell you they don't do anything. God is the one doing it. St. Moran's like, yep, boom. Yes, he and was also known for dealing with various demonic attacks. Largely the, you know, demons were, were going after him, not that mm -hmm. he dealt with a lot of possessed people or anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, again, you know, because he was holy, the demons are trying to take him down because they get him. He was a big prize. But he's doing like karate chops. All right, and now aside. the wine-based miracles. Wine! All right, so I feel bad either, I only have my water bottle here. Either one, on one Lent or for every, every Lent, Lent, he was known to have lived for the whole time eating only one bunch of grapes. I'm going to go with him doing this uh, one-time deal. Yes. I'm going to go with him doing this every Lent. I'm going to go with the bunch of grapes. Was the bunch of grapes like from Numbers 13, 23? So he just ate a giant grape each day. <laughs> <laughs> He actually put on weight every Lent. <laughs> it's not as impressive, I mean, but it is more comical. <laughs> I mean, realistically, realistically, you just need a bunch of grapes. I mean, one grape a day is is very penitential, but theoretically not impossible. I mean, maybe if he fattened up during the off season. You know, for forty days. I mean, for forty days, you'd probably not die. You'd probably as long not as you stay die. Hydrated. Mm -hmm. You would really be looking forward to that to that to that uh, that Easter morning Eucharist, though. You would. The whole Benedictine life is ora et labora. <laughs> <laughs> you would not be able to keep up your workload on 
one grape. I mean, I know that Benedict Whoa, 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 wait, hold on, hold on. Come on now. We're talking about a guy who makes a cross over a, over a burning it's building, fair. and God it's just fair. says, nope, that, that, that building's not burning no more. <laughs> so I'm willing to believe that, you know... Yes, this is why it's put on the miracle list, not just the extreme challenges. They didn't have, now, like, you know... Here's my one grape, and now I'm doing all my work. They, now, they didn't have the TV shows where it's like, you, you survive this, and you get the million dollars. That's fair. That's <laughs> now fair. I'm all, he no, gets I, something better. He gets heaven. I am willing to believe that if it was every Lent, yeah. that in all likelihood after the first one... Seeing that he was going to do it again, his brothers went and got together and just kind of tailored his workload. You know, it's like, well, no, no, he look, he's eating one grape. He cannot go out and plow fields. I will plow his fields. He he can take my floor sweeping. Uh, I, that's a fair trade. Or it's like the early chapters of Daniel where he forgoes all the rich food and eats only vegetables and is in better shape than everyone else. Yeah. So he's eating one grape and he's doing all the plowing. <laughs> he's lifting cows over his head. <laughs> it's like a Superman. <laughs> I mean, that would be, would be a bit more of a miracle because I, I don't care what you're eating, unless you're like a professional strongman and it's like, you know, not a full-grown cow, you're not mm -hmm. lifting it over your head. <laughs> Just, you know, the size issues alone. <laughs> nope, nope. He's, a Yer he's, he's Jürgen Sandow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so his, okay. his other wine miracle is once he was short of wine and there was a guest there, and of course, you know, the big thing was you, you have to, you know, take care of your guests. Absolutely. So he made the sign of a cross. Jesus taught us this. You have to have plenty of wine for your guests. He made the sign of a cross over a wine barrel, and it filled with wine. Boom! That is a great miracle. So that, I don't know uh, if it's better than putting out a fire, but it's awesome. I don't know. Now I'm imagining the combo where he just makes a giant, never-ending thing of wine that washes away the fire. <laughs> this makes both things, in a way, worse, but... <laughs> what if God made the one grape bigger after he ate it? Hmm. Mm, so you're saying God multiplied it. So he ate, like, half a bunch, and then, like, he comes back, and, oh. Mm. <laughs> well, there's that. But, but, there's, so but there's, there was also the... My, my, my theory was more that it's a grape, right? It's, mm -hmm. I mean, anybody would look at that and say that that's a normal grape. But he eats it and it gets down into his stomach and the grape just kind of... Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the grape... That's giving his body uh, more grape to digest. Yes, and, and, yes. And... Yeah, a supernatural caloric intake. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. ah! All right, I like so... This idea. So, as, as, as we have less and less information with these saints, Purdy, the more and more we make up stuff that <laughs> might possibly be... We haven't officially been told is not true. <laughs> but for all I know, that's why Especially you're doing in it. Especially in France. <laughs> for all I know, that's why they're doing it. Are they are they comically giant grapes like huge balloons, or are they Nate's super concentrated grapes? We don't know. We don't know. We may never know. We want. We will one day know. I, I mean. Look, I am certain that there when will not be... When we get to heaven, and he's like, actually, that was just like a joke the guys made because I ate a lot of grapes for Lent. <laughs> so he would just say, I say this in all Christian charity because I'm a perfected saint. You guys are idiots. <laughs> I am certain that there will not be any, any knowledge from which we will be prohibited. <laughs> However, I do believe that... <laughs> it's be great it, as a general judgment. I was like, oh, that's how he did it. I do, I mean, but I, 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 I do have believe... a friend on Catholic Twitter who her first question to God is who was D.B. Cooper. So, I mean, on the list of, you know, silly questions. Dan Cooper. His name is Dan Cooper. It was none of those, but yes, he went by Dan yeah, and they I'm just called like, it D.B. I think D.B. is made up of whole cloth. He wrote Dan. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. No, infer, no knowledge that we will, that we will be prohibited from. Mm -hmm. However, I want to believe that in our, in our perfected intellect and will, mm -hmm. There will be knowledge to which we will know that which which we will no longer seek because we will realize that compared to everything else is insignificant. Well, the 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 common debate between the, the virtue of studiousness versus the vice of curiosity. We'll only want to know those things that help us. We will want want to know things just to know them. But again, as as I understand the general judgment, everything will be known, and there'll be a lot of oh. And a lot of, ooh. And we shall finally know mm. who let the dogs out, which was Nate during the, the, the break, because the dog was very insistent. <laughs> so, we have walked a road of increasingly obscure saints, from St. Titus, St. Rufus. Yes, because we had info on those. Yeah, to 
St. Ulfia, and now St. Miranda of Cluny. I can't wait to see who's next. Yes. And for all those of you out there who are like, man, it's no fair. They keep talking about, they mm -hmm. keep doing stuff for Ferdy Do. But give us something. Anything. We love viewer requests. We'll be happy to do the episode that you request. Exactly. Especially even if it involves if it's, comically large grapes. Even if it's ridiculous. Ooh. Especially if it's ridiculous. Let's be honest. Maybe they'll ask about comically large dogs and we'll do one about St. Bernard so we can know which, you know, St. named Bernard the dog is named after. Clifford. They're like, it's the region that was named after the saint. The Clifford, the large after. red communist dog. Yes. <laughs> It'll be great. There has to be somewhere in the line of St. Clifford. It, it was a or popular maybe, enough there, name at times. There is a St. Estelle, so why not? <laughs> or maybe you're thinking to yourself, man, I'd really love to see them do some obscure saint, but I don't have any obscure saints. That's fine. Give us a non-obscure one. Yeah. We can go find the stuff that people... Mm -hmm. I mean, look, if you give us somebody like St. Francis of Assisi, we're going to have to go digging for stuff because, I mean, there's a certain amount of stuff that everybody already knows. I mean, we could, you know, point back to our old one about how he was a wolf whisperer. The Wolf Whisperer. Oh, Which I, is... I love the idea of of of, of offering mass, of offering you know mass to Brother Wolf. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm 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 presuming that he didn't offer Eucharist to Brother Wolf because I don't I don't believe Brother Wolf can be baptized. Mm. But I mean, it wasn't a cat, so there, there there's a slight chance, but you know. <laughs> so, anyways, so comment go below. down below to the comment section and. Give us something. Give us a saint. Maybe it's a not well-known saint. Maybe it is a well-known saint. Maybe. Just don't make it a made-up saint. Or an aspect of the faith about which you want to know more. Yes, that would be good, too. Perhaps you have questions about, I don't know, purgatory, judgment, heaven, or hell. We've, I know we we've already, all, we've, all we've, we've, done, every we've done those every year, but I'm just saying. Well, how not did, always purgatory. How did the Bible come to be? How did the catechism come to be? What do we mean when we say that we're saved? All sorts of things. So give this episode a like, subscribe to our channel, ring the church bell to be notified when your viewer requests an episode it comes up. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. And share, share that, that love. love. I'm waiting for the comment to be like, Mary, not that one. No, not that one. No, not that one. <laughs> All the Marys. Well, we could do Mary of Clopas. We could do Mary Magdalene. We could do Mary Not of Bethany. We, we, we skip all the Bible Marys and we find some obscure one that's, you know. Well, there's St. Mary MacKillop. There's, there's, there's okay, no yeah, shortage of yeah. Marys. Yeah. But first...